Hey everyone, this is Brian with TheUnlocker.com and today we're here to give you our full review of the Motorola Droid Razor from Verizon Wireless. Alright, so the Motorola Droid Razor, we're going to start with the design because obviously that's the, uh, that's the biggest selling point of this phone. There are several, uh, but for me, I mean, they're really making a push about the, uh, the Razor brand name. So I think the fact that it's 7.1 millimeters thin at its thinnest point, that doesn't include the camera hump, I, th I think that's an important uh, point to discuss. Is thinner really better? Um, not for me. I've been using this phone uh, as my primary phone for almost two weeks now. Uh, I did uh, just recently deactivate it and switch back to my Thunderbolt. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is, um, it is uncomfortable for me to hold. And some of you may not agree. Some of you may be completely shocked by that. I certainly haven't heard uh, many people talking about how it's too thin of a device. But for me, that's honestly how I feel. So I would just warn you, if you're looking at the, the Droid Razor for purchase, one of the things that I would advise you to do is, is actually go somewhere where you can hold the phone. Not with the, uh, not with the little thing on the back that Verizon has, but actually get a, a working demo unit get something so you can hold it in your hand and feel it. Now, I will tell you that I do have an OtterBox case for this, and when I put it inside the case, which is a fairly you know thick, it's a, uh, a silicone case with a plastic overlay, uh, and it, it's a really nice case, it actually makes the phone uh, a, quite a bit thicker, and it actually makes the phone quite a bit more comfortable to hold, and I actually prefer it when it's inside that case. I know some of you, like I said, you're not going to agree with that. You're probably not going to know where I'm coming from with that. Uh, if you haven't actually held the phone yet, uh, you owe it to yourself to do that before you make a purchase. Uh, you can see here, I mean, we've got these beveled corners here on the edge. And the only thing that they do is when you're, when you're gripping the phone in your hand, it doesn't dig into your palm. That's really the, the only benefit there. As far as, you know, the sides here... There's no bevel. It's just a square slab device. And, and holding it in your hand, it's just, for me, it's not comfortable. Now, if I, if I take this aside, I'm going to bring in the HTC Thunderbolt, which is undoubtedly too thick of a device. I mean, if you look at these two together, I mean, the Thunderbolt's damn near twice as thick. But the way the Thunderbolt feels in the hands because of these rounded edges, it feels so much better. Now, when you consider the fact that both of these are housing a 4.3 inch uh, display, you know, obviously the, the Motorola Droid Razor, there's a whole lot more bevel around this device than there is on the Thunderbolt. It just takes up a, a larger footprint. And if there was a uh, 4.5 inch screen on the Droid Razor, you know, I would definitely, uh, you know, say that's warranted. But the fact that we have the same. Uh, 4.3 inch size screen uh, and obviously the screen resolution is better this is not a comparison this is just kind of a, a basic you know what what could this phone do to really enamor me and and 4.3 inches on this footprint just just isn't doing it and so uh, you know, like I said test it for yourself feel it hold it in your hands see how it feels maybe you'll like it maybe you'll you'll say well I don't have a problem with this but I can tell you one-handed operation for me has been extremely difficult. Uh, the phone, there's not a whole lot to hold on to. There's not a whole lot of heft there. So even throwing your pinky underneath the device, I mean, you've got to adjust your grip to be able to reach around the screen. And while I'm you know, familiar with that from the Samsung Galaxy uh, 2 devices, this just, it's a 4.3 inch screen and I don't want to have to adjust my, I, my grip on something of this size. Alright, I just have a couple more points on the design and I will stop harping on, on the design, I promise. Um, the build quality has been renowned as being an exceptional build quality. Uh, you know, metal phone is, is kind of how it's touted. Uh, Kevlar backing, uh, the nano coating that's over the electronics, that's all fine and good. Uh, but I can tell you this feels like a plastic device. This does not feel 
uh, you don't have that same premium feel that you do with the iPhone 4. Uh, I'm not a big iPhone fan, so don't flame me on that one. Uh, but, you know, this is, uh, you know, widely touted as having exceptional build materials. And, I mean, this right here, this whole casing, everything around this device, it, it's, it's all plastic. Uh, it's got a small, very thin metal frame on the inside, which you can't feel, which, you know, simply adds probably a little bit more rigidity uh, when you're trying to move the device back and forth. And that's it. One other big uh, big note of concern that I have is this power button. This has got to be the junkiest damn power button I have ever seen on a phone. Um, even the uh, the volume rocker, which is you know just cheap plastic, it feels good. It's got good tactile response. Uh, the, the keys work very nicely, and then you have this mushy, crummy button here. And, I mean, it's a major fail for Motorola. Why they would choose to put a power button in this phone uh, just baffles me. Uh, you probably can't see it here on the video, but just moving my finger up and down this phone, I can feel the wobble in it. And it just feels mushy and almost, you know, HTC is, has widely been renowned as having, you know, pretty mushy uh, power buttons that eventually recess. Uh, I don't see this this uh, key actually recessing over time and it does provide you know good feedback when you actually press it uh, but just the way it feels and I mean even the fact that they put this little sticker over top of it which makes it look like a metal button when it's clearly not it's just a little bit misleading and uh, I, I really the, I have a problem with this power button because it just kinda it tells a story for me and uh, it's all about the looks it's all about the marketing and it's not about the actual uh, components or the actual feel and and that's just me personally but you know like I said test the phone out for yourself hold it for yourself play with it and if the design works for you then go for it now if you're still with me through all the harping on the design which I really didn't anticipate to be a, a downside to this phone uh, when I when I first got it in my hands uh, let's talk about the positives and the positives are basically the speed and performance of this device uh, this is extremely fast. It's very responsive. Everything just works very quickly. And the way I the way I feel about it is finally we have a phone that's fast enough to run Moto Blur. I know they're not calling it Moto Blur. I would have changed the name as well. But uh, you know it's kind of like in the movie Joe Dirt when he tries to uh, say his name is uh, Joe Dierte to try to pretty it up. That's kind of what Motorola did when they got rid of the, the Moto Blur name. They, they prettied it up a little bit, uh, but it's still a pretty laggy overlay. And you can see a little bit of lag here and there uh, where the, the widgets and things just kind of have a you know, split second to catch up to itself. Uh, but realistically, I mean, scrolling back and forth, opening the app drawer, uh, scrolling back and forth in that, going home, opening mo multiple applications. This phone is flat out fast. It really flies. And uh, I'm going to apply a live wallpaper here and show you exactly how fast it is. All right, here we have the My Beach HD live wallpaper, which was one of the apps in the uh, 10 cent um, you know app giveaway or whatever it is for the 10 billion app load or app downloads last week. And there's a lot going on in this live wallpaper. There are waves crashing, there are planes flying by, clouds are moving, uh, you know, there's a lighthouse at night uh, when it's nighttime. It's also got a uh, fire uh, going. There's a beach ball that's kind of wrestling in the waves there. And obviously this is not as fast as a static wallpaper would be, uh, but it is incredibly fast compared to something like my... Uh, uh, my Asus Transformer, when I run this same live wallpaper, I mean the home screen, you, you kind of press it and then it just kind of follows along. And you can see how quick this device is. And I mean the live wallpaper has, you know, the background takes a second or two to catch up maybe, or a millisecond I should say. But uh, the screen doesn't ever lag. And it just feels incredibly fast. And, and, and a device that can keep up and retain such fast performance with a live wallpaper of this magnitude is something you just don't see in Android every day. Here we've got the browser open and we're, we're at CNN.com. This is the full site. Uh, we're just going to show you the pinch to zoom. It, it's relatively fast. Any Anytime you have flash content running 
on any device. I don't care how smooth it is. It is going to slow it down a little bit. Uh, this is a good time to talk about one of the quirks that I've found. Uh, when you're scrolled into something, you know, or zoomed in, and you zoom back out, if you zoom out now, you get this little vibration that you feel. And the screen kind of does this, uh, you know, weird animation. And it's just one of those quirky things that, that Motoblur has. It just kind of has been driving me nuts. I mean, every time I'm in a, a web page, I want to I want to zoom out and make sure I'm all the way out. When I do, I you know pinch my fingers you know from pretty wide and bring them in until I pinch them close. And you get this annoying little uh, little animation there. It's just something to point out. It's just one of those little quirks I found. Uh, camera quality on this device has actually been really good. Um, the camera has a decent amount of choices. Uh, there is some uh, customization here, and, and Motorola has actually done a really good job with the camera. Uh, there is uh, panorama support here. So if you take a look at this image, uh, it does have uh, the support for panorama mode, which is not built into Google, so it's something that Motorola has added. And it works quite well. Um, and you can see you can take quite a large uh, shot. It does kind of add some uh, unique artifacts and things like that. Uh, if you're taking uh, pictures of things that are either moving or are just you know really wide, I think this was made up of like six different images. Uh, but the uh, video quality has been uh, excellent. Uh, 1080p and 720p both look really good on this device. I've uh, I've heard some people kind of complaining that it's a mediocre camera. Uh, my experience has actually been quite the contrary. I think the camera is a really nice feature of this. Of this phone and I think that you know people that get it uh, especially if you're thinking you know based on something you've heard that it's a mediocre camera I think you're going to be really impressed low low lighting uh, shots weren't near as noisy as some other devices that I've used and the video performance was actually really good and uh, you know decent light I took some uh, video at my my daughter's bowling uh, when she had her birthday party at a bowling alley and you know bowling alleys aren't, aren't the best lit places and the quality was was actually pretty good uh, all around so I'm just gonna sum it up for you guys uh, this is a thin device it's a fast device uh, whether or not it is too thin is something that I leave for you to decide uh, but I definitely did want to spend a lot of time talking about that because uh, after two weeks of having this phone uh, I'm I'm glad that I'm not going to be holding it anymore, and I know that sounds bad and that's pretty harsh, uh, but it's just a personal preference. And so I think if you're honest with yourself and and go and give it a fair shake, you're going to either either love it or you're going to hate it. And uh, either way, it's going to help uh, you know guide your choice. And if you like the way this phone feels and you like how thin it is, then I think you're going to be very happy with the phone because. Even though we're, we're running Moto Blur, it's, it's a better version of Moto Blur than what we've had in the past. It looks cleaner. It operates smoother, at least on this device. Uh, it operates very well. Uh, everything's very fluid. Uh, there are you know, some you know, Moto Blur quirks and things that are added in there that I'm just not a big fan of. But none of it's, Moto Blur is not really uh, a big deterrent for me to not buy this phone on this particular device because it's fast enough to handle it and it doesn't get bogged down. I've got a Droid 3 here that I'm going to bring into the picture just because I want to show you a quick comparison. This thing here, I'm just going to go and I'm going to set my alarms just so you can see this thing stutter. Let's click that alarm on. Yep. Let's click that one on. You can see it's just taking a moment before it actually does anything. Now granted, uh, this has a 1.0 dual gigahertz processor. This has a 1.2 gigahertz processor. This has one gig of RAM. And uh, the Droid 3 has 512 megabytes of RAM, and and I'm sure that's that's probably the main reason for the uh, for the difference there. Uh, but this device is almost painfully slow to use. Uh, I wouldn't put a live wallpaper on this phone because that would just make it even worse than it already is. Uh, but I know there's not a lot of free RAM on this device because it's only running 512. Uh, but, you know, for anyone that's played with the Droid 3, uh, you think it's a fairly new device, so you want to go and take a look at the uh, Droid Razor. 
uh, but you're you know you're kind of like ah no I played with the Joy Three it's basically the same thing except for the razor's thinner. Uh, you owe it to yourself to go and take a look at it because this really is one of the best performing devices I have ever uh, played with. It's certainly uh, not the right device for me, uh, but for many of you it may be. So anyway, I hope this review helped. Sorry if I uh, you know went on a little long about the design and things like that, but I uh, wanted to give you guys my. Uh, fair and, and complete thoughts on this. So if you have any questions or comments, hit us up at theunlocker.com. And this is Brian, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.